Hello everyone, I'm back with another tool today and today I'm going to show you my Lens Dearth Creator. And what this does is creating a texture of dust being on the lens. So it looks something like this. And what you can do with it, for example, is I have this render here of a lens flare. And what I want to do is I want the camera lens to be dusty so that the dust interacts with that render. So what I did here is blur the lens flare, boost it, and then I'm going to multiply it with the lens dearth shape. And what that does is that the lens flare is going to reveal the dust on the lens. And with everything combined, we get a very nice looking uh, lens interaction here with the flare. I didn't try to make the best looking image here right now. That was just an example. Okay, let's get into it. First of all, you get an overscan option. And this is very important to use because the defocusing of the elements inside will work better around the edges if you have some overscan happening. So you can disable this, but then sometimes you might get some artifacts around the edges. So I would recommend to have that on all the time. I made this so that when you have a lens texture, you can use your lens distortion that you get from MatchMove um, directly with it. So you just put it behind and you get the proper lens distortion for your lens element. You could also crop it if you want. So if you do all the lens distortion inside the node, which is possible, it's good to crop it here so it runs faster. And then you get different dust layers. So you can put three dust layers and you have a lot of options for them. You have the particle amount, um, which will render some time. Yeah, and then you have the particle gain, which is basically revealing some more particles. And you have the seed. So if you want to change the overall look of it, just change the seed until you get what you want. Bouquet size is um, the strength of the defocusing. And boost is just a multiplication, so you can make that whole thing a lot brighter if you want to and mix self-explanatory okay so in the next step you can control the shape by default this node gives you a shape which looks like um, a seven bladed aperture so you can modify all those things that make up that shape here what you could also do is use the filter shape input and connect it to anything you want I have some lens textures here and this node will do all the defocusing based on that texture so you can quickly get very nice looking um, lens textures here. Um, but this takes a little longer to render if you use the lens texture so the default one is fine. So then we have some map options. You have a map input so in case you want to add some custom texture on top of everything you can do that here. You connect the map and then the map, map will be put on top. Here you can decide if you want to over it or multiply it with everything. So then we have some things here. First of all, let's disable the crop. Um, we have the mix, of course, and you have the resize type. So depending on what the aspect ratio of your input images, you will have to change the resize type to either width or height so that your element covers the whole frame. Then we have automatic scaling. And what this does is it will scale up the image according to the overscan. That means if you need 10% overscan, you should have this automatic scaling enabled because it will scale your input image just enough that you have um, information in the overscan here so that you, when you do your custom lens distortion after this, your image will be big enough so that you don't get any edge artifacts. So I would recommend having that on all the time. And then we have this checker, apply lens distortion which is um, only functioning if you have lens distortion enabled in the post effects. So here there's a lens distortion built in, which you can use if you, do, um, if you want to do your custom one. And here you can um, decide whether you want the lens distortion to work for your input image or not. 
So then also we have some more post effects here. First of all, we have fringe, which is these colorful um, yeah, fringes around the elements. And here you can decide what color it is and you have the saturation and strength options. By increasing the strength though, you will lose some quality and it will act kind of like a little blur. Then we have, let's disable this, um, we have cat's eye bouquet. So, and this will cut off your elements on the side to give a more realistic look. Let's see, so you get nice cat's eye bouquet. And we have finally the vignette, which is just a white vignette, which is overlaid, happens on some lenses. If you don't like it, just disable it. Um, it's worth to know that the size here is acting like this. So if you change the size to zero, the vignette will end here. And if you have it to one, it will be scaled up by 10% so that you get um, like the overscan here. So you have some options here and you can also customize your blur. Okay, that's it. I hope you like it and uh, don't hesitate to give me feedback.